Hi, I'm Ethan, and today we're here at the Arnold Dam to go kayaking. And I'm also here to talk to you about the environment. The first topic I'm going to talk about today is impact of introduced species in New Zealand. Here at the Arnold Dam there are plenty of species to talk about, but I'm going to be talking about gorse. Well, here it is folks, gorse. Gorse was introduced to New Zealand by the Scottish as a hedge originally. But it done so well here, it has spread in to being one of the worst weeds New Zealand has today. The reason gorse has such a harmful impact on New Zealand's environment is because it smothers young forests. As you can see, gorse grows very thick, which makes it near impossible for other native plants to grow through or get any sunlight to photosynthesize. Over summer, or if the plant dies, it becomes quite dry, like these ones here. When it is dry like this, it becomes very flammable and is a huge fire risk. The thick bush of gorse, though, does have a few benefits for, for some of our native birds. Gorse is perfect for building nests in, because it already protects them from predators that may be wanting to kill them. Gorse does so well here in New Zealand that it flowers twice a year. Whereas in the Great Britain, where it originated from, it only flowers once a year. Right here is a perfect example of gorse overpowering our native ferns and making it near impossible for them to grow. Gorse covers vast majorities of New Zealand's landscape. And you can see why it has had such an impact on the New Zealand ecosystem. Anywho, that's enough about gorse. Let's go kayaking. <laughs> On the topic of conservation and recreation, here we are at the Arnold Dam, which generates enough power to power the entire west coast. We're also about to go kayaking on the same river. This is a good example of conservation versus recreation. White are, however, a different story. We're here down at the Arnold Seal Launch and Pesky Jaws is over with that. We've just been having some epic surfs on the Arnold. We stopped in the lunch spot because we've noticed a few Rimu. Rimu are a dominant fauna in the west coast forest. You can identify um, Rimu by the long droopy leaves. You can see a few dead ones right here. They're slow growing trees. The Kea is the world's only alpine parrot, endemic to the southern Alps of New Zealand. The Kea is an inquisitive bird, often found too close for comfort around people's belongings. They are a beautiful looking bird with many coloured feathers. The Kea has adapted over millions of years to be able to live in the harsh environments that it does. The Kea is now an endangered bird with an estimated 5,000 remaining. The Kea often feed on human waste and it is the reason they are endangered. Many of the birds no longer need to search for food and are relying on humans. In the late 1800s, the care were also in danger as there was a price on their heads due to them killing livestock. An estimated 150,000 birds were culled, 
When kids aren't eating human food, they are omnivores, taking a wide range of plant and animal matter. They forage in trees and scrub for shoots, fruits, leaves, nectar and seeds. They dig in the soil for insect larvae and plant tubers, or native orchids. Kia nests mainly below the tree line, on the ground in natural cavities, such as a rock crevice or the hollow base of a large tree. They usually lay four eggs between July and January. The incubation period takes 22 to 24 days, and the chicks stay in the nest for three months. Because kias nest below the tree line or on the ground, they are a great target for our pests, rats, stoats, and possums. The pests feast on the kia themselves as well as their eggs. Kias have also been known to be killed by possum traps, as well as 1080 poison drops. We spell want to build a 16 to 20 milliwatt hydroelectricity scheme on the upper Waitara River. The scheme would include a 5 metre high concrete wall across the top of Morgan's Gorge, diverting the river into an intake structure, down a tunnel 1.5 kilometres through penstocks, then into a powerhouse and switchyard, and then a tower raised structure back into the natural flow of the Waitara River around 2.6 kilometres downstream from the intake. West Power have said the dam is to meet the growth in electricity demand and provide adequate reliability. The west coast already has a large surplus of electricity supply capacity, not a shortage. The proposed hydro scheme turned a lot of heads and got a lot of people interested in the debate. The debate started not because of the dam itself, but more because of the idea that it represents. Some people refer to the Waita as the Mount Cook of Rivers. This is because of its sheer beauty and what it represents. What does the Waitara represent, you may ask? It represents a choice, the ability to still be able to go out into the bush and experience New Zealand in its true untouched landscapes. If the proposed hydro scheme goes ahead, New Zealand and the world would have lost a geological masterpiece. But it's more than that. New Zealanders would have lost a choice. The Waitara holds a lot of intrinsic value for me personally, not for recreational purposes, but on the fact that we would be destroying natural beauty of millions of years of life not passing it on to the next generation. In this video, I've talked to you about the impact of gorse and introduced species on native ecosystems in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I've also talked about dominant flora and fauna found in the west coast forests, such as rimu and kea. On the topic of conservation, recreation and development, I've talked about the Arnold Dam, as well as the Waisha Hydro Scheme, 